Hey guys, it's Spaces Sims, and welcome to our new game, which is Cupid Parasite, Sweet and Spicy Darling. So we're going to play the fan disc to Cupid Parasite. Preface this with, I don't remember a damn thing from the original game, except for, we love Raul, he's such a himbo. First himbo we fell in love with. That's basically all I remember. Um, so, I do, I have noticed that there are some things that come up, like I tried, I, like when I don't, before I play games, I don't want to read about them, aside from like just general reviews, but I've seen some things that there just there might be some questionable stuff in here because it's sweet and spicy. So I this can be awkward, probably. But anyway, um, so also there seems to be a bazillion characters because I went in obviously to do our settings, turn our voices off, all that stuff. So if you're new here, hi, welcome. Don't know why you're starting with this. I would assume you should start watching the original Cupid Parasite playthrough because otherwise this won't make sense. Unless you've played it yourself and whatever. But just in case there is anyone new for the first time. Hi, Spacey. I'm obnoxious. I swear a lot. We do all our own voice acting here and it's awful. But everybody seems to have fun with it. Um, so if you're here to listen to the characters actually talking in their sexy, good voice acting voices. You ain't getting that. Um, we will play with those at the end and listen. Uh, but for everybody else, welcome back to this. Like I said, I have no idea. I don't remember what happened in the first game. Um, and I made the choice to play this game without a poll. I knew you guys would all vote for this, by the way. I kind of figured. But also, I made the choice with my brain and not my heart. Because I had to figure the time between when our other game ended and this one will end and then when Nine Rip is coming out. And I made the choice based on the estimated time it would take us to play this game based on a Tome Kitten's review and how long it takes her. Because we are generally 10 to 20 hours longer than her. That's not really helpful, to be fair. So, <laughs> so between the games that I had, I was like, this one will give us at least a little bit of a buffer, so I have some time. Though this one will go a little over past when Nine Rip is released, and then I can have some time to record that one, hopefully. So that's how we got to this one. Anyway, um, I'm just going to go through. So obviously this takes place after the original Cupid Parasite. Uh, they continue the narrative from the best endings. And I would assume because there's a new character that he is probably after maybe the common ending or something. There are three segments in the fan disc after drama, which feature stories that unfold after the best endings of the main character routes from the previous game. Again, I don't remember like anything because it's been so long. New Parasite, the segment features the route of the new character. I think it's Marinese. I think that's how you say his name. I'm not sure. Anyway, his tale begins right after the conclusion of the common route. Okay, yeah, from the previous game. Specifically, when the Parasite 5 canceled their membership with Cupacore. I don't remember that happening, but like, whatever. Bonus episode, each member of the Parasite 6, because Marinese. Marinese? 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 I think it's Marinese. Like Bernice, but like. But it's not Mernice, it's Marinese. They have to really fuck with me with names, don't they? Anyway, uh, each member has three unique bonus episodes. They can only be unlocked after clearing the best endings uh, in the after drama mode. So the bonus episodes will kind of do the way we did it for anyone that's here constantly. Uh, like Radiant Tail, we kind of did the stories and then we just did the little bonusy things after. So we'll do that at the end. So... Anyway, I will kind of read the synopsis just to give us a little refresher in case we all forgot everything and we remember nothing aside from bright, colorful, and fun. Uh, I solemnly swear that I will love you so that you always smile. I'll protect you for as long as I live. Oh, my bird's sitting with me, so just pretend I said that to him. This is the continued love story of the goddess of love, Cupid, experiencing love firsthand. It's the tale of when she becomes a goddess only for him. Marriage wasn't the end goal, but the start of a new chapter. Whether they began dating or got married, the only thing awaiting them is a series of unexpected challenges. A mysterious new creature has appeared in Lost York. Could it be a divine message or evidence of an unknown civilization? A love story so sweet it'll make your heart melt. The whirlwind of feelings taking the world by storm is far from over. 
an endearing, joyful, and chaotic tale that's richer and more exhilarating than ever. This romance featuring a former goddess is a sweet and is so sweet and spicy it'll make your teeth ache and set your soul ablaze. And in Marinese Levin's route, her days as Cupid are far from over. A romantic and comedic story in the world of matchmaking is set to unfold. So anyway, there you go. All of that. So do do do. You've got all of the different stuff. So let's see the recommended route order. Uh, no stories are locked or restricted. You can start anywhere you want. Some side characters play significant roles in certain stories. So if you're someone who prefers to preserve the element of surprise near the end, it might be best to start with routes where these side characters' motives and backgrounds are not heavily hinted at. So we'll go with that because that sounds like, like, normally if I were playing it without a guy, I would just jump right and do whatever. But we like to keep as much of plot and secrets and things as we can because that makes it more fun to, you know, think. And but not that I feel like there wasn't a lot to think about in this, you know, well... In the original one. We had one, but uh, uh, kind of figured that one out pretty pretty easy. Anyway, in my opinion, Raul and Alan's after dramas contain the most revelations about the side characters. Might be best to save those two for last, although it doesn't matter too much. Okay. So, by no means it's a recommended play order, but if you're curious, Otome Kitten went with Marinese, Ryuki, Shelby, Gil, Peter, Alan, and Raul, and she enjoyed that sequence. Ideally, Alan would be a great round to end the game with. She only picked Raul last because he's her favorite in the first game and she's the save the best. You know, I can't disagree with her there. So we'll we'll go with her recommended order. We use her guides all the time. We trust her judgment. She's never led us astray. I don't think we've ever gone with the recommended order that she has suggested that has either been because the developers recommended it or, you know, that was the order she chose. I don't think we've ever been disappointed. We've never been like, no, this was terrible bad f we've always never so we trust we trust we trust a tome kitten okay she's our guide god in this house right? <laughs> we stand our guide queen so we will trust that and we can make the decision as we go if we want to say do alan last switch alan and raul or because i agree with her raul is my favorite Alan was great too, don't get me wrong, but there's something about that nerdy little himbo. So, okay. So we won't... Oh, there's a content warning. Okay. Contents below contain spoils for the first game. Now, there's... Con like, this is a general spoiler for the game itself. Not a spoiler for the game, but a content warning for the game. So I'm going to tell you that. So, pay attention. Because if any of these things bother you... This is now your moment to turn it off and not watch this. Okay, be responsible for yourself and your own triggers. The game is not responsible and I am not responsible for these things, okay? Take responsibility for yourselves here, people. All right? So, content warning for this game. Violence, implied sexual intercourse with an anthropomorph anthropomorphic character. Oh, you know who that is. Okay, infidelity. Murder, kidnapping, confinement, dubious consent, and voyeurism. Yeah, the, uh, okay. It, it, it's, oh, okay. What, I, we know! I already, okay, see, I kind of already suspected something like that because just seeing people like, yeah, that thing with Jupiter, and you're like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, because we all know his secret identity when he was spying on her was cute fluff ball chi and I think it was when I was playing Radiant Tail and people were like the Rady thing with I was concerned about Rady because of this game and I was like wow oh, no oh no and I don't I didn't want to know but now we know so there you go that's um I guess you don't want to say bestiality but it's implied but I'm gonna get okay so if you don't <sighs> Guys, I already don't want to read that. I'm terrified of that. Anyway, so we're going to start with Merenice. We'll start with him. So we'll open our new thing. Here's the thing. Um, I kind of don't quite remember the voices we gave everybody, right? I forgot there was a new character. I kind of remember everybody's. Jupiter didn't really have a voice. He didn't, he didn't really have much. He was just kind of normal. Um, 
And then I was like, you know what I realized? We didn't have the fun accent, guys. We didn't have our accent voice. But do you think we should give it... I was going to give it to Jupiter. I was going to be like, he gets to have the fun whatever we're passing off as an Irish accent. <laughs> that is an insult to all Irish accents everywhere. Uh, I don't know if he looks... Anyway, anyway, let's just... I guess we select Darling and we do New Parasite. Oh, after drama. Oh, yeah, see, he doesn't look like he would have... Does he? Look at those pretty eyes. Because Ryuki kind of had the snotty boy accent. Well, okay, let's start this. New Parasite, Marinese Levin, is the... Oh, it's the strings of fate that have guided you to me, right? Okay. So we're going to do that. Okay, anyway, let's read some notes. Marinese's route can be played from the start. There are four endings. The bad end, good end, bad end. Oh, best end. I was like, what? Best end, good end, bad end, and Owen end. <gasps> oh, wait, but... We have to steal Owen away from What's-Her-Face. Didn't he have a little girlfriend and we were, like, just happy for him? Did Owen have the accent? I don't remember the voice we gave Owen, guys. I really don't. Anyway. Clearing his best ending automatically unlocks a bonus scene for Zeus, Finn. Marini's best two. To unlock the game's completion CG, you'll need to go to event view, view all episodes with the unmarked, and skip all... Okay. That's probably what we'll do at the end with the bonus stuff like that. So anyway. So we start here. Okay. So. Uh, wait, no. Reset. Okay. No. This is what I want. No. No. Wait, what? Init wait, no. Oh, initialize the name. Okay, and I'm like trying to like, and I was trying like okay like I listen the controls on this one are a little like I don't quite know what's like okay guys listen it's because you're watching me okay it's like when anybody watches you type you can't spell your own fucking name don't watch me close your eyes and I thought like reset like X I wasn't thinking like it reset it back to her original name but anyway obviously. If you're new here, you don't know. But we change our name to Spacey to make it more awkward when they're like, I love you, Spacey. Because that feels weird even just saying it now. Anyway, yes. Oh, whoops. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. God damn it, guys. Guys. Guys, it's not my damn day. Yes. Look at Shooting Star. That was pretty. Oh, no, this is way too slow. Okay, since ancient times, shooting stars were believed to be the gateways through which gods looked down on Earth. Uh, their lights were beacons, prompting wishes. Thus, people preyed upon seeing them, hoping for their desires to manifest and seeking better destinies. I did change the text speed, but I didn't see a normal text speed one, so I clearly missed it. Or it's just really slow. They gazed at the starry skies, believing that the gods were watching. For thousands of millions of years, the stars have shined brilliantly. And hopefully the music in the background isn't too loud. I tried to turn it down. Oh, what's happened to Cupid? Meeting over donuts. Do you think he should? I guess we'll just go back to giving Jupiter a normal kind of voice. You know what I mean? And maybe we'll give Marinese the fun a accent because he's new and we've never used that accent in this game. Unless we gave it to Owen. Sorry, Owen. We're stealing your voice. There's a lot of characters. I don't have enough voices for this. Four in the afternoon at my desk. Okay, hold on. Let's go. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, look at the map. Look, this is like a... View love levels, flowchart, map, voice memory, options, titles. Like, this is neat. Okay. Red skip, all skip speed, auto. I guess auto. Oh, message speed must just be the normal one. I don't know why my brain. We'll just go straight up fast. Um, I don't know why my brain, when I was thinking message speed, was like, oh, do they have, like, message, like, like a little text message box or something? Like, I don't know why I wasn't thinking the normal text box. <sighs> me at myself right now. 
Okay, that might be too fast. I want to see it. I don't want it to just insta pop up. You know what I mean? But I also want it to like not take six hours. Okay. Looking at the profile sheets before me, I sighed. I didn't expect the Parasite 5 to quit their memberships all at once. Okay, this is better. It, see, I like to see it move, but you know. Following the end of the Parasite House broadcast, my motivation to find their perfect matches only intensified, but they all left Cupid Core. Of course, I was depressed about it. <laughs> Do we remember Cheese Voice? It's this! This is... You know what? Please don't be here, because now I'm thinking gross. Oh, God. Noticing my sigh, Chi emerged from beneath my desk, wondering what was wrong. Chi! 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 I remember Chi's voice, because it was easy, but... Chi fidgeted, so I patted him on the head. I examined the profile sheets of the Parasite 5 and sighed again. Every single one of them quit. So much had happened since I took charge of them. Oh, there are boys. This is the first... Wasn't this like the first CG we got in the original game? Aww. From my shocking first meeting with the Parasite 5, to becoming their bridal advisor, to even appearing on TV. Oh, right. You know what? I appreciate the CG flashbacks, especially the topless ones. Oh, I forgot about Bomber Chorizo. Wasn't that his name? Oh, man. I forgot about him. Even though our matchmaking show, Parasite House, experienced numerous mishaps throughout its broadcast. I like how that pops up when everybody's shirtless. Every one of us matured while in that share house, and the program was a hit. I believe we were just beginning. Before they could wed, they all abruptly left Cupid Core. That decision derailed my impending promotion, completely deflating my enthusiasm. Wait, no! I can't just blame my motivation! I'm the goddess of love! Yes, I was the true Cupid, the goddess of love. Cupid existed so that people could fall wondrously in love. That was why I always needed to give my all. But the shock of these recent events left me utterly disheartened. Oh, it's Claris. Okay, I was like, who the hell is this? Right, okay, the names are on the bottom, so I gotta make that. I don't remember her voice either, but whatever. We got enough lady voices anyway. What's the matter? Are the profiles of the Parasite 5 that fascinating? We'll give her our standard. Claris. I looked up to see my best friend, roommate, and colleague, Claris. I heard they all canceled their memberships. Yeah, I thought we were just getting started with it. Hmm. I did watch the show. Perhaps it's for the best. I also feel bad for anybody who, like, watched the first Cupid Parasite and then is coming to this right after. And was like, cool, I'll watch them back to back because the voices are all going to be fucking different and I'm sorry. But it's been so long. And, like, it took me hours today to figure out which game I was going to play and to debate and try to figure it out and but what was the best time. And then I was like, all right, fine, we'll just do this because this will work. And this is, like, roughly the perfect amount of time. And then I went, I don't remember the voices, so I didn't have enough time to do the research because I'm behind, as most of you know, because of time taken off work for doctor's appointments and my mom being here and the week not having, not being getting behind because we thought the channel was going to get taken down by voltage. And now my roof is leaking and then waiting for things like that. And maybe this week, as this is posting, when I'm intending to start posting this, someone will be fixing my roof, but... Who knows how long that's going to take, so I might also... So you know what I mean? Shit has been sucky as of fucking August. August blows and I hate this fucking month. Okay? So between work stress and life stress and just stress, stress, and everything stress and stress on top of stress, I'm very behind. So like, I, I literally waited to the last possible second to come up and start recording this. I made the decision like five minutes before I started recording today. Like right now. So... Yeah, I, and it was like, normally I would have time and I would prepare and I would like, let me go research the voices that I gave everyone, but I didn't. So, sorry. I know the dudes, roughly. But like, and also we are clearly playing this before we had the really bad accent. So it's very fun when we go back and look and we're like, oh, we didn't have the fun accent then. I don't think we had the fun accent when we played the first Pio Fiore and then when we played 1926, we did. So, like, huh, anyway. 
Hmm. I think we read that. Anyway. Hmm. He did watch the show. Perhaps it's for the best. Hmm. This is the Parasite 5 we're talking about. Even if they did grow as people, marriages would still be likely would still likely be years away from them. The advisors surrounding us echoed Clarice's sentiment. Exactly! That so-called prestige parasite, Monsieur Essa, never appeared on the show! And the Lovelorn Parasite always hesitated. I that's true. I forgot that nobody knew that Shelby was actually the prestige parasite. Because in my brain, I'm like, so how did he get away from that? Because he was, I remember he was pretending, he's pretending he's married, but then secretly a client. And we know, but like, right. Didn't he do the whole like, I'm going to go on the show for him in his place. I'm like, you know, his stand in, you know, like as a representative for him. Because it was supposed to be like, Owen was really his representative when we were talking to him. But then... Shelby went on the show for him, quote unquote. You know what I mean? That actor Raul Alkanai kept saying it was all for research. They wouldn't even marry at all. Which is oh, so sad. I love Raul. The glamour parasite never even acknowledged other customers. And the thieving parasite was ousted for a breach in terms of service, right? Wouldn't it be better to focus on other clients? Ugh, they're right. I'd been puzzled by Alan's silence, only to discover his Cupid Corps membership was revoked for violating terms of service. I'd hoped Alan would outgrow his thieving parasite nature during his stay at the share house. It was a shame I couldn't express the joys of love to them in all that time. The phrasing of that is inappropriate, but I love it. It's a shame I couldn't express the joys of love to all of them in that house when I had my man harem. Complete? Well... Now we've got new boyfriends to add to it, but it's fine. You know what I'm saying? Because that right there, somebody who wrote this was like, we know these bitches want a man harem that we're never going to give them. So we're going to write this line in there because that's exactly what you think of. Like, <laughs> I'll express my love to all of them. <laughs> you come here for the shit. Well, maybe we should do something fun to forget about all that. Exactly. Like clubbing and meeting new people, you know? Clarice gave me a final shrug and headed back to systems development. Meeting new people. I want to make that happen for others, not for me. I was ready to get back to work, but Clarice's words brought back all their faces to my mind, and I wonder if I can still get a promotion. At this rate, I thought of Dad's face. The God of War, Mars, was an air. Oh, the God of War, Mars, was an arrogant god who believed humans required divine guidance. Uh, the man who fell in love with a Roomba? See, I'm going to remember certain shit as it comes up. Don't worry, I didn't forget about Bumble Pig. Nobody forgot about that shit. That was the most insane bonkers weirdness. But I'm going to remember some of this shit as it comes up, like that. Like, I forgot about Bomber Chorizo until we saw that and was like, right, right, okay, I remember him. He was fun. And I, right until she said Mars, now I remember. So we'll get bits and pieces back. And rediscovering some of the fun things that we forgot should be fun. I left my home in Celestia to challenge his philosophy. I wanted to become the top bridal advisor without using my divine powers. That was my new goal as Cupid. I need that promotion soon to prove Dad wrong. You genuinely seem like a job parasite. No wonder your performance is good. I do worry about you. Are you that worried about getting promoted or not? Well, yes. I just nodded ambiguously since I couldn't talk about my family matters. Soon after, I heard a loud cry. And how about getting your fortune told? You know, to see if you'll get promoted. Fortune? Oh my god, is Marinese a fortune teller? Oh, is this about that thing trending on social media? Yeah, that. I've been meaning to go. How about we drop by there on our way home? I stared up blankly at them as they giggled, wondering what they were talking about. You know that new tourist attraction on 8th Avenue? That's a There's a great fortune teller there. After work, we visited Bell, uh, Batol Tower, a new attraction in Lost York. Batol. There's lots of T's and L's in that. Well, there's two T's and two L's, but still. Wow. Yeah, wow, that thing's weird as fuck. Lost York is fun because everything is crazy here. The entire structure reminded me of a giant cocoon. 
with stairs that were placed in com in complex ways. Like M.C. Escher designed, designed this. It had a very modern design, typical of what you'd expect from Lost York architects. So is the fortune teller somewhere in here? Well, we don't know where he is. You don't? You need to climb the stairs, and if you're lucky, you'll meet him. It's a test of luck. This is insanity. What? That sounds like fun. I'll go first. The two of them excitedly climbed the steps. Oh, we're going to meet him. Whether or not we meet him is all up to luck. Tests of luck and fortune telling weren't things I'd experienced here. I've had fortune cookies, though. Ooh, fortune cookies are so good. Ever since I came to the human realm, I hadn't participated in any of these luck-based activities. Do you want me to pet you or not? You're pushing your head down like you want petties, but then the second I touch you, you bite me very hard. You're being a very jerk. He's a big fat jerk bird. He's a big jerk. But he love you. You're so cute. Yes, you are. You're such a nasty bird, though. You're so very nasty. Are you biting and you're kind of mean? Because you've been stuck in your cage a lot. Because Grandma and I had to go out to doctor's appointments on Thursday and we were gone all day. It was very sad for you. Yeah, you got excited because you thought we came home at once, but I just had to run in the house to go bathroom and pick up my car because we had to go get the car inspected. She had to go to her doctor appointments, and I had doctor appointments, and then we were gone till like 6 o'clock at night, and then we didn't come home till then. Yeah, and then Friday we went out, and we were out for a couple hours, and then Saturday we went out because Grandma doesn't like sitting at home. And then Sunday you got to be at your cage, and you had to be in your cage a little bit this morning because I had to go to the doctor's again. Got lots of doctor appointments. They think I'm all on the ball. They're like, wow, you're on the ball with all your appointments. And I'm like, that's just because I can't drive. So my mommy has to drive me. So she comes and visits. So we get all of my doctor. I'm teasing the bird. He's like biting at me. <laughs> Everybody went to the doctor man except for you. Yeah, you're going to have to go. We're going to have to get your toes trimmed because they're dagger toes one of these days. Because I don't think you'll like it if grandma holds you in a blanket while I try to trim them. And you're going to have to get lots of shots and stuff. We were supposed to do that like nine fucking years ago, and we didn't. Oh, dear God. Who's calling me? Don't know. 256 number. Hold on. Anyway. So, ever since I came to the human realm, I hadn't participated in any of these luck-based activities. Because what seems like luck to humans is usually the intervention of the gods of the de consente Oh, right. Yeah, the... Is it consentes? 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 We I couldn't figure out how to... The DC. Anyway. We couldn't figure out how to pronounce that anyway. <sighs> Anyway, inexplicable events caused by the gods tended to be described as fate by humans. That was why I never gave much thought to fortune telling. Well, where the fuck are the gods giving me some good fate over here? Jesus! But it was still a part of human culture unfamiliar to me. As the saying went, there's a first time for everything. And I really do want to know if I might get a promotion. Let's go, Chi! Chi! Oh, Chi! Maybe freaked out from the unusual stares, Chi ran off. Despite being a divine beast, he was always easily frightened, which is really fucking funny, to be fair. I looked back up at the stairs. I'd already lost sight of the others, and now I was alone. I wondered if they got uh, if they got to the fortune teller. Oh well, might as well give it a try. I wandered aimlessly, first heading up the right side and then descending on the left. No matter how far I walked, I didn't encounter my co-workers or anyone else. I checked my phone in case someone had found the end, but no one had sent any messages. And that's also weird, you're not encountering, like, well, okay, not encountering your co-workers or the fortune teller, but, like, is there anybody in this building? These stairs are so strange. They're built like a labyrinth. Okay, all I'm saying is find a baby, because you're gonna need to trade it to the Goblin King to be able to stay in this labyrinth, is all I'm saying. All right, we know how this works. I've seen the movie. I've been prepared for this since I was a child. Like, I'm just saying. Have I told you the story of Labyrinth before? I mean, if you haven't seen the movie, what are you doing? Pause this, stop, go watch it. Because it is the greatest movie ever fucking made. But I remember renting it as a child. Like, just picking out a movie and like, whatever. You know, being like five or six fucking years old, I swear. Like, I don't even know. Picking out a movie to rent, you know, I don't know if I had friends over that night, if, like, my friends that lived across the street were coming over, or I just, I don't remember, okay? I just remember renting it, 
And I remember like really enjoying it. But like when I got older and I think I rented it a couple times, you know, when I was a kid. But I just remember at one point, like, obviously times change. I don't remember what it was, but I couldn't remember the name of the movie. Because, like, as a child, you don't know the name. The word labyrinth is not something you think about. And all I remember being, like, there was, like, a thing about a maze. And, like, I could And, like, nobody knew what I was talking about growing up. Okay? It was, like, nobody knew. Okay? And I was, like, there was this movie, and it had a maze in it. And there was, like... And I, of course, my brain, for some reason, being, like, five- or six-year-old brain. And then you're older, and you're, like, 10 or 11 at the time. And you doesn't think, like, there were the Muppets! It was the Jim Henson Creature Shop Muppets and David Bowie in really tight pants. We, I didn't know who David Bowie was at the time, okay? And I apparently, like, you rem- like didn't connect Muppets and Puppets. You know what I mean? Like, that's something you figure out when you're older, I guess? I don't know. I don't know. And I remember it took forever. It wasn't until high school, and I was sitting in a class, and somebody said the word labyrinth, and I went, what the fuck did you say? And they're like, yeah, that movie, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that is the movie I've been searching, like, over a decade for. Like, holy fucking shit. And it was like all the pieces clicked and my whole life was, you know, just perfect again. (laughs) That's like, but like, for God's sakes, that movie had like a hold on me for like a decade and I had no idea in the back of my mind. I'm like, God, man, that movie that you just couldn't figure out what it was because you remember it as a child and then like finally somebody and then it's like, oh, thank God. It's like a cult classic now. So I'm just saying. If they ever remake that movie... I will burn the universe down, and I'm sure a bunch of us will, because that is a crime against humanity. That movie is perfect the way it is. Okay, that's not true. That's not true. Okay, the only reason that that, the big flaw in that movie, okay, the logical fallacy here that where you're like, no, this makes no sense, though, is why Sarah, at the end of the movie, would choose to take her whiny, snotty brother back instead of being like, hell yeah, turn him into a goblin, I'm staying here! That's just bullshit. Nobody in their right mind would take their whiny, snotty, obnoxious little baby brother back to their house and go back to their normal life as opposed to being like, yeah, no, Goblin King, you can turn him into a fucking goblin and I'll stay here with you. I mean, hello? So that's the only thing very unrealistic about that movie that I'll say. The rest of it, though, perfect. (laughs) Obviously, we know the choice that I would make in that situation, clearly don't know where I'm going to find a baby to kidnap. <laughs> I'm not going to go kidnap babies. Please please, please don't put me on any more government watch list. Jesus. We're going to be on several after playing this game, I'm sure, with some of the questionable content. Oh, Lord. Uh, anyway, this these stairs are a labyrinth. And are we going to meet the king of the labyrinth now? Because uh, Maranese might be my new favorite character now. Right when I begin to question if I'd be able to find my way back out, do you... Do you Oh, nope, there he is. I was like, did you find a cute little worm? There he is. Let's see. What are you wearing? I'm sure it's supposed to be like a kimono type robe, but what the fuck are you wearing underneath that? He doesn't look like he should have the Irish accent. He looks like he would have soft boy voice, doesn't he? It doesn't he look like he'd have the sweet, soft little voice. And I don't think anybody quite had that voice because Gil Ryuki was more the ugh, whatever standoffish, bitchy kind of voice, like salty marshmallow bitch voice. Shelby had her deep voice. Uh, Raul had her bro dude voice. Gil was more, oh, yeah, no, I'm going to be like, he had kind of this kind of voice. It was a little more, you know, that. And then Alan had her flirty whore voice. So we didn't even have our little soft boy voice. So we, okay, we actually technically, what do we got? Like six or seven? Now? We're getting there, man. We're doing it, guys. We're got new voices. And Jupiter was just normal. We just had a normal voice for him. So I think Jupiter we should still give the fun Irish accent to. Because I feel like that works. And maybe Marinese should just, because he just looks so soft and delicate. And I don't see, <clears throat> we'll read this both ways. Like the, oh, you're the first cust- customer of the day. More the Pashalia type voice. That's Which was also a... Technically, I feel like that's the Victor Frankenstein voice, but I don't think it was quite there when we played Code Realize. But then the, oh, you're the first customer of the day. Yeah, he doesn't look like he has that voice. No, he has the soft boy voice, so we're going with that. Okay. Then Jupiter by default gets the accent. Unless we gave it to Owen. We might have given it to Owen. 
But again, I don't remember. Owen, sorry. You're being downgraded. Anyway. So anyway. Oh, you're the first customer of the day. Huh? A man with a mystifying aura stood before me. You know... Aside from the fact that that one side of your hair is almost like a bowl-cut mullet, the other side's fine. I'll give you a pass right now, because you are pretty. His voice was as soft as a whisper, yet it carried a commanding presence. See? The Irish accent, or whatever the fuck that accent is, it's not very soft. His long, graceful hair flowed back as he smiled warmly. Oh, and now he's... Blue colored, okay. I'm Marinese Levin, a fortune teller capable of seeing people's fates. You've come to have your fortune read, right? Yeah, see, it's weird because he almost has like the little short okay, it's more like a short bob. It's not quite a bowl cut to be short. Like a short bob all the way around with the like jellyfish tendrils. He's kind of got jellyfish hair, but then also has long bangs on the one side. So I don't know what they're doing here. That got really loud, that music. But I'm not a I'm not too bothered by it because the long bangs kind of balance it out and make it okay i don't like jellyfish hair i hate it i hate it okay but like it's workable here i don't it's okay the man named marinese extended a hand toward me with a gentle smile yeah you know it works for him not mad about it yes i've heard about you and <laughs> And then please share the aspect of your future you're most curious about. What I'm most curious about? What I see is all of one's destiny. Like a film reel of the future that awaits you. That happens in Black Butler too, but usually only when a Grim Reaper stabs me and steals my life reel. I don't, I don't think I like where this is going. As a fortune teller, my duty is to enlighten you about the path you're curious about. So which part of your future intrigues you? The future that intrigued me. Of course it was whether I could get promoted or not. Your expression. It doesn't seem like romantic concerns are on your mind. You're wondering about your career's trajectory, right? Wow. You're right. The funny thing is, is for someone who is like a divine being ourselves, you'd think that, are you some kind of god or divine being or something? You're some kind of mystical creature, ain't you? Wait, you know what I mean? I don't know what he is, but he's not normal. You know, like Alan, Alan's an incubus, right? Wasn't that it? Among the possibilities your future holds, I will concentrate on the strands of your career to reveal your fortune. He smiled and slowly raised his hand. Ooh, look for a CG! Is he looking through a donut? <laughs> Look at her face! This is our first CG. He is beautiful. You know what it is? It's almost like his hair is kind of pulled off to the, the right side. And then so he is like, it's... I don't know what it is. I don't know what they're doing with it. But I don't mind it. It works for him. But I love the fact that he is looking through... Okay, Sasazuka. Channeling Sasazuka over here. The sleeve of his outfit waved as it rose. And he began looking through the middle of a donut. <laughs> it's kind of... You know what? This is why I remember loving this game so much is because everything is fucking bonkers. Okay? Everything is we're goddamn ridiculous. Wait, a donut? The look on her face says everything. He narrowed his eyes, focusing through the donut. A soft breeze fluttered his hair. Through the donut, his pale colored eyes stared at me, emanating a mysterious and otherworldly aura. Is this what fortune telling is like? He wasn't gazing into a crystal ball or using cards of any kind. He was simply looking through the hole of a donut. It was as if he was piercing straight into my soul, and it left me feeling uneasy. I love this so much, it's ridiculous. Mimicking the oracles who received visions in ancient temples, he began to speak slowly. Your destiny. My destiny? Promotion? Or perhaps failure? I gulped, hoping for the sign that I might prove Dad wrong. But no matter how much I waited, he didn't continue. There is no future? Huh? His eyes, still trained through the donut, widened in astonishment as if he just saw something unbelievable. Maybe he can't read the future of divine creatures. I can't glimpse even a fragment of your future. 
nor your past. There's no trace of destiny. I've never seen anyone like this. Wait, could it be... You're not human. Uh-oh. What are you? Oh, we're gonna have to kill him now. It's unfortunate. Ah, here it is! What a relief! I thought we'd never make it! Oh, you beat us here! So, did you have your fortune told? Yeah, we just wrapped up. Thank you for the reading. How much is it for your services? I reached for my wallet, but Marinese only stared straight back at me. Oh, look at his eyes! He's so, like, so suspicious of us. No, I couldn't provide a reading, so there's no need for payment. But could I ask more about you? Those pale, mystical eyes locked onto mine. A chill swept over me at his question. Not good. I was suspected of being inhuman. Um, oh no, I just remembered I have a delivery arriving today. I need to go home. Oh. I lied to my two co-workers and rushed home before my true identity was exposed. But in my frantic escape, I didn't realize that I had left Chi behind until I was already on the subway. Yeah, well, I mean, he can find his way home. He's not stupid. Well... She's gone. She left so fast. Was her reading that shocking? Maybe her promotion chances are grim. I thought she'd definitely get it, though. Excuse me, Mr. Fortune Teller. Would you mind reading our fortunes? Yes, I can. Uh, please tell me the destiny you wish to know. I'm curious to know if my diet will be successful. I want to find out if I'll get a boyfriend soon. Understood. As usual, I assess their prospects by peering through the center of the donut. It looks so funny when his sprite does it. Like the other one was a CG, but he looked. Look at him. He's so seriously peering through the donut. Oh dear God, guys. Oh my God, this is absurd. I can see. This time everything was normal. I could see the film strips of destiny above their heads. I always just said the future I saw. And that was all my fortune telling was. So why couldn't I read the fortune of the woman earlier? So how's it look? Will my diet be a success? A donut looks really goddamn good. She didn't say that, but... It seems you'll keep up with it for several weeks. But a month from now, I see you eating a slice of cake. At least for this year, your diet won't be successful. However, next year looks promising. Really? But I just started fasting! That's why you shouldn't fast. Like intermittent fasting maybe but like you shouldn't like force it because like then you get hungry and then you eat more you know what i'm saying i see you sneaking chocolates during your breaks at work and indulging in cafe and cafe mocha topped with whipped cream the stress at work makes me eat all right i get it this year isn't my year for dieting and me will i find a boyfriend Yes, tonight you'll encounter the man destined to be your boyfriend at the movie theater on 2nd Avenue. Tonight? So I should just head to the theater right away. What should I do once I'm there? Fate's already scripted your paths. You must simply trust in it and let things unfold, right? As I relayed their fortunes, my mind kept wandering back to that mysterious woman. Let me get the CG flashback. Appropriate use of the flashback is flashing back to the CG quickly. Why couldn't I perceive any element of her destiny no matter how hard I tried? And typically, reading fortunes was second nature to me. Why couldn't I see hers? He's adorable when he's perplexed. I kind of expected my diet would fail. I'm excited to meet someone special tonight. I need to rush to that theater. Thanks a lot, Mr. Fortune Teller. The two seemed satisfied with their readings. They paid their bills and left. I let out a deep sigh and gazed at the sky. The dusk's hues were deepening into night, and in that crimson canvas, the first star glimmered. Maybe it's time to wrap up for today. 
I love the fact that one of his fucking sprites is a fucking do is like just looking through a donut. I took a bite of the fortune telling donut from earlier, expecting to savor my favorite flavor. Um, but today it tasted different. I could only wonder about the woman whose fortune I couldn't see. I wonder if I'll meet her again. Every time I looked through a donut, I could watch someone's destiny. And this was the first time I was unable to. And then I noticed a piece of paper at my feet. And this is... It was a business card. When I whipped out my wallet. A Cupid Corporation top bridal advisor, Spacey Mirror. And that's what it said. Spacey Mirror. I knew it didn't belong to those other two. I could see the names of those whose fortunes I read. And this must belong to her. If I go to the address on this card, could I meet her again? With that thought, a particular numbness spread from my fingertips. A woman whose destiny I could not see. She could be the key to escape my predetermined fate. Oh, interesting. Okay, so he's got like an interesting little story then. Uh, perhaps this was our fateful encounter. Oh dear. Oh no. Okay, sorry, we can't watch the uh Case 7 Destiny Parasite. We can't uh we can't watch the title credit scene because it'll probably have copyrighted music, so we can't do that. The next morning when I got to work, everyone was talking about yesterday's fortune telling. Did you hear? The fortune I got from that guy was spot on! Really? So you actually met someone special last night? Absolutely! The guy next to me was totally my type, and guess what? He's the one who asked for my number! It really is like going along with fate! If he's that accurate, maybe I should go! He's at the Bell Toll Tower, right? It's the Batoll Tower. I, w I don't wanna, I wanna say Bell Toll Tower, like, I wanna fucking rearrange the letters? Anyway. Well, it's a matter of luck if he's even there, right? Still, I'm glad you got to have your fortune read. Yeah. <laughs> if what he said was right, my do diet is doomed this year. I'm considering just surrendering to my cravings. Wow. Gee! While I was staring off into space, Chi suddenly jumped into my lap, whining. He'd been sulking ever since I accidentally left him behind yesterday, as he does. I said I was sorry. Gee! Chi turned his face away, clearly still upset. I gave him a gentle pat and I got back to my work. That's basically the way you act. My bird is like totally napping, smooshed into my hand right now. I still felt the loss... I still felt the loss of the Parasite 5. I couldn't get any answers about them or my promotion from that fortune teller. But our reading came true. Maybe his fortune telling skills are the real deal. Which meant I was the only one who couldn't read. Maybe it was because I wasn't human after all. Maybe I should have the Parasite 5 get their fortunes read. I still had their profile sheets in front of me, hesitant to put them through the shredder. And then suddenly... Miss Mirror, I'm sorry, but do you have a minute? What's the matter? I'm trying to onboard a new customer, but he's saying something odd. Uh, plus, he has your business card. My business card? I believe it's someone you recruited previously. The customer insists on having you as his personal advisor. Would you mind taking over? I don't remember giving out my business card recently. Maybe Clarice or another colleague referred him. Regardless, I had few members to manage since the Parasite 5 quit. Okay, I'll handle it. Thanks, he's in the meeting room right now. Please take it from here. Sure. It was hard to let go of my concerns about the Parasite 5, but for the moment, I had a new customer to focus on. But if he's Parasite 7... Who's Parasite 6? Leading as many people to marriage as possible was my duty as Cupid, and the only way to show up Dad. I collected the file containing the member's details, set Chi back on my seat, and proceeded to the meeting room. <sighs> What's the matter? You look exhausted. Well, the customer specifically requested it, but I ended up forcing another weird person onto her again. Weird person? He kept insisting that people's fates are predetermined, even marriages, that it should all be left to destiny. He wouldn't stop talking about fate, ignoring everything I said. 
If he's so convinced destiny determines everything, why did he even sign up? Hmm, destiny, huh? I suppose we could call him the destiny parasite. Thank you very much for coming today. I'll be your bridal advisor, Spacey Mirror. It's a relief to see you again. Huh? I froze when I entered the meeting room. It was the fortune teller from yesterday. Marinese's eyes lit up with happiness as he firmly shook my hand. Well, due to his long sleeves, our hands didn't touch directly. But look at how pretty he is. Um, hi. I wasn't aware you were a member of Cupid Corps. His presence was so intense that I pulled back my hand, but after a moment, I took out my business card as I did with all new members. Yet he gently smiled, retrieving an identical one from his pocket. That won't be necessary. I already have one. Right. I was informed he had my card. But when did I... The truth is, I came here after finding your card on the ground yesterday. I dropped one of my cards? Yes. You must have dropped it when you were trying to pay. Thank you for picking it up. It's no trouble. Because of it, I got the chance to meet you again. Surely this is destiny. He looks, when the look on his face is like, surely this is destiny. <laughs> There's something about the shady look on your face right now, sir. As he offered a tender smile, I noted the Cupid core or, uh, orientation materials before him. He must have just received them. To me, does this mean he's seeking marriage assistance? Even if it was a big coincidence, it meant another member I could oversee. I scanned the profile sheet in front of me, preparing to explain our services. Marinese Levin, we tailor our plans to our customers. May I give you an overview of our options? Of course, I've been hoping to meet you again. Hmm. To start, our company's motto is, from your first encounter to your final vows. A first encounter? Like Cinderella losing her glass slipper, it was a very fateful first encounter. Or like Rapunzel. But it seems I'd play the role of Rapunzel in ba Batol Tower. Um... I wasn't sure if he was really following along, but since he kept nodding, I opened the orientation materials. This is our most popular plan. Ah, so it's the same as yesterday. Hmm... Marinese ignored what I was showing him, focusing instead on my face. His smi he smiled warmly, then pulled out a donut, like his fortune readings. I've realized, you're the only one whose destiny I can't read. So, being with you means experiencing unexpected joys, right? Unexpected joys? Yes, days that are entirely pre-planned are simply boring. Um, you came for matchmaking services, didn't you? I want to walk alongside someone whose fate is a mystery. Someone whose fate is a mystery. You know, I mean, that's actually like a really... Like, because they could have had another, any kind of other parasite, blah, 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 like similar to the plot of the first one. But this is kind of an interesting start to his plot. You know what I mean? Like, he can see everyone's fates and futures and everything, knows that the future is predetermined type of a thing, sees all this stuff, and it's like, well, that's boring. He knows the future. You could just opt to not look, I suspect. But, you know, so seeing us and being like, you have no predetermined future. That's awesome. Finally, something unexpected. You know, so I don't know. Like, I kind of like it. Like, yeah, you know what? All right. And, like, weirder shit has happened in this game. So, you know. Hmm. That's why I came to see you. Because I can't see your destiny. Right? His question reminded me of a college professor checking if I understood a lesson. Still, I asked Marinese in response. You came to see me? Can I assume you're here for matchmaking? I would assume the right answer is you came to see me. I have to reach over. The bird is in my left hand, so I have to reach over myself. Yes, you came to see me. Yeah, you came to see me? Like, because we, I would say, because, uh, can I assume you're here for matchmaking? Which seemed very wrong. 
Did you come here just to see me? I followed where fate led me. And it brought me to you, so that must be it. Aww. Right, I forgot the little heart things tell you that that was the good choice. Also the guide, but what's he implying? Ugh, I'm getting confused. If meeting me was fate, then does that include getting matchmaking advice? But, but you are here for matchmaking, aren't you? I became a member earlier today. Which means he intends to use our matchmaking services. Right? The membership via Cupid Corps wasn't cheap. Given his membership, I had to approach him as a client interested in our services. <laughs> Regardless of how much I tried to explain, Marinese ignored the materials and only looked at me. I think, and this is the first time I've looked into someone's eyes like this for so long. Even after releasing my hand, Marinese was intent on coming closer. His pale eyes, seemingly piercing through everything, now bore into mine. Those enchanting eyes sparkled, reflecting his joy. Then he reached out to hold my hand once more. Even when I'm this close, I still can't see. You truly are the one I've been searching for. <laughs> Owen's like, the hell is happening in here? I don't remember. Did we give Owen the accent? I really don't remember, guys. I'll have to look it up after this part. Um, but for now, we're just going to give Owen a normal voice because I don't remember what we did for him. So pardon this. But also, if we gave him the accent, it's going to be kind of like we really should give it to Jupiter, who's got a longer Jew, Peter, Jew, Peter. We should have figured out that Jupiter and Peter were the same person just by the name, like Jupiter. And then you change it. Peter, Jew, Peter. Do you see? Do you see what I'm saying? I don't think that that was where the logic came from when we knew. You know what I mean? It was like, they look alike. But anyway, how long did it take us to realize that Chi... Well, we knew Chi was Jupiter from the very beginning or somebody spying on us. We're like, he is spying on us. That was obvious. Anyway, um, excuse me. A knock sounded and Owen promptly entered. I feel like Owen had the accent, but... Owen? I mean, to be fair, we could give Owen the accent and we could also give it to Jupiter because I don't feel like they're going to be crossing paths too often. So if Owen did have the accent, we might just use it for both. I mean, we'll try to do a different tone to it. It's all going to come out sounding the same because I'm not that great. So I'm sorry for the interruption. I was handed this as I walked by. Owen looked puzzled, not fully grasping the situation as he placed a coffee on the table. I spotted my co-workers peeking at us from the doorway. I'm so glad we got Owen to step in. That destiny paranite parasite is totally flirting with her. What should we do? Clients aren't allowed to pursue advisors. Should we cancel his membership? Cancel? But maybe we could treat it as a first-time offense and give a warning instead. Oh no, they jumped to the conclusion that Marinese was hitting on me just now. I mean, he is. I don't sense any romantic intent from Marinese, but I'm still not sure about his motives. Oh, and thank you very much. Marinese, can I ask you to have a seat? I need to continue with your onboarding. I just want to talk with you. Uh... Well, I'll excuse myself. Wait, Owen, don't... Oh, that's somebody else. Wait, Owen, don't just ignore what's going on. You have to stop them. We're not having sex on the coffee table, Jesus. Everyone's coming in! The door flew open and everyone who had been eavesdropping tumbled in one after another. Marinese kept, tight, kept a tight-lipped smile, but I quickly pulled my hand from his grasp. Sir, I need to clarify that it's against our policy for clients to make romantic advances on advisors. Make advances? What do you mean? Marinese kept his gentle smile, innocently tilting his head. I knew it. There was understanding of personal boundaries was a tad off. He wasn't actually trying to flirt, probably because he has no idea how. Everyone, please calm down. I don't think Marinese means anything inappropriate. And how can you say he wasn't trying to make advances? Because I wasn't. I genuinely want to spend time with her. Ideally for the rest of my life. <laughs> Sir, this is exactly how I would flirt. Like, no, I just want to marry them. 
I'm not flirting. I don't know how to flirt, but I... <laughs> Oh, I love them already. It's the same thing as making advances! I see. So you were flirting. Well, I think I need to leave now. Oh, and that's not the right reaction for this right now. Um, everyone, I'm in the middle of the orientation. I can take it over from here. Come on, Miss Mirror. I need you out of the room. Huh? But he just became one of my members. Yes, that will be a problem. I joined this company specifically to meet her. Huh? That's two warnings for you. One more and you're out. Marinese, if you're not interested in matchmaking, we might have to revoke your membership. So, you just need me to participate in matchmaking. Huh? Well, yes. And then I'll do it. He smiled while holding up his donut. What exactly is happening here? I don't know, but it's fun. Berenice, are you sure you understand? Matchmaking means you're searching for a marriage partner. And perhaps that's my destiny. So are you saying you really are interested in romance and marriage? Yes, I might not have had such a destiny before, but now I'm interested. I followed the lead of this business card, so if that's what's expected of me, then perhaps matchmaking is in my destiny. If you're sincere about participating in matchmaking, then you're not violating any terms of service. He keeps bringing up destiny. He's definitely obsessed with it. We have a match, a matching event tonight. Will you be attending? If that's what's expected of me as a member. Hmm, I'm not so sure about this. He didn't have any. He didn't have the enthusiasm I saw in other clients eager to get married. But then again, some clients are reluctant to admit their intent and dodge the topic. Maybe he's one of those. Regardless of his unique demeanor, he was now a member, the same as any other client. I'll give you the details of tonight's matching event, then. Can I leave the room now? Of course. Sorry about all the confusion. We'll head out, too. Apologies for the abruptness. It's fine. And I'll say it one more time, Levin. Making advances on advisors is strictly against the terms of service. Good luck finding a match. Yes, I hope to follow Destiny's path. Let me explain today's matchmaking party and the system our company uses. Yes, let's start the matchmaking. I aim to discover my unseen destiny. And that is where we will end it today. And we will continue in the next part at the matchmaking and see what kind of shenanigans this man's going to get up to. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.